Hi there, um, I'm Chris. Uh, and this is Steven. And uh, we're going to be talking about Netrunner. All right, there we go. Um, so yeah, uh, we got together and uh, we're big Netrunner players and we uh, decided to s record the videos to see uh, if people are into that sort of thing. Um, worst case, it's kind of cool to play more Netrunner and then talk about more Netrunner. Yeah. <laughs> Just introducing more Netrunner into your life. <laughs> it it perp perpetuates the Netrunner, which is what we want. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I should talk a little bit about uh, the goofy Next deck that I am playing. I am on the left uh, playing Next. Um, and the, the concept of the deck is to essentially start the game out to, like immediately at the mid phase. So normally Netrunner games are broken up into the early game phase where runners have pretty much free access to all the servers. And then there's mid game where the court can lock up everything and then start scoring. And then the like third phase is kind of the free for all where the runner has their rig out and you're just trying to kind of tax them or you know kind of sneak your way in. Right. Um, and score agendas with the court. So using next First of all, the ability lets you just blow out a bunch of ice on that, like the pre-turn click, um, and then uh, the deck also uses like shipments from Miramorph uh, to essentially create like large ice servers kind of out of nowhere, and then uh, it uses targeted marketing and then program destruction to keep the runner in um, the mid-game phase. And I was I was really impressed uh, for one with uh, shipment from Mir Mirmorph, which I've never actually seen played, um, and I think this deck uses it in a way that takes it took me off guard. Um, I wasn't sure what to do. Half the time it gives you a free server with you know uh, basically you're going to score an agenda the next turn and or. Uh, if I can't do anything to do about it, and, and noise, this particular noise deck isn't really su suitable for running consistently. Um, it's mainly like, you know, mill, 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 run archives is sort of the thing. So it it was a pretty good, it's a pretty good matchup, actually. This one went a, a bit long, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this is the beginning kind of crazy opening of next decks where you can usually install two, maybe three if you're lucky, free ice. Um, but yeah, I, I think Shipments from Mirmorph is one of those underplayed cards that will, uh, like, it has hidden potential because it just says gain two free clicks. <laughs> uh, and targeted marketing on Parasite is, like, hoses. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess um, we'll, you'll they'll see in a second, but um, what your deck tends to do is put up a lot of cheap uh, binary ice and uses um, uh, uses targeted marketing to essentially lock out the runner from playing their breakers or playing the way they get through ice, right? And, uh, I mean, against, against Noise, Parasite, wow, I mean... <laughs> you'll see right here, you'll gain tons of money off me. I just have to play it. I just have no other choice. Yeah. Um, um, so the next deck, like, realizes that, like, people will eventually break. Like, so normally, like, it's usually either Parasite or Corroder or Clone Ship. Like, or Self-Modifying Code is also really good against Shapers. Um, uh, but the deck also runs, like, Biotic Labors, so, and a bunch of two threes. So, like... The deck has really low economy uh, because all the ice is really cheap. But if you, you know, finally do drop the corroder, right. like yes, it will, like start blowing through all my binary ice. But now I can actually afford to buy a labor step out. So I got a pretty decent start here as as noise uh, wild side in my hand and a data sucker. So I'm looking pretty good, feeling pretty good. Um, this noise 
uh, I found, and this is the one that, uh, this is the same net, uh, deck that won German Nationals or Regionals, I, I think it's Regionals. Oh, I tried, tried playing that deck, I hate that deck. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird oh, deck. Yeah, this is where you're just running HQ. I, I had nothing HQ. in hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but I've got to get some sucker tokens. Hopefully, I was hoping to snag a an agenda early, like maybe you were bluffing, and then targeted marketing would go away. And I think I was holding a parasite the entire game here. Um, so, targeted marketing doing some work, keeping me out. Um, and I guess the the best. I mean, you had a really good response to it. Just don't raise your eyes. Like, <laughs> I mean, I guess uh, even if you do, I can just. I'm just giving, giving you money, so I don't know. Um, yeah, and I think multiple ice at deep servers is like the counter to that parasite, like the, in Anarch specifically, because you Anarchs don't have the tools to flash things out. And like you're already losing clicks to the wild side. Yeah. And this is a desperate attempt to get rid of targeted marketing. is isn't is not working. <laughs> yeah, at that point, like, I know. Once, once you get access to like someone's hand, like they have three cards and they're just letting you walk in, like it's probably time to look elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like you had a one in three chance of hitting something valuable, so it's like uh, either you're really a monkey, or like there's probably nothing there. Yeah. It's, I don't. I don't know many people that would like try that bluff of. Um, you know having three cards, one agenda, and, like, mm -hmm. not resing that ice. I suppose so, yeah. I was also, at this point, I didn't know what you were playing, so I was kind of trying to get you to, get you to res some cards, uh, but I don't know why I didn't run R&D. I should have been running R&D every turn here, actually. Um, I mean, I think I had, I think I had, like, an next bronze or an next silver in it. There. <laughs> yeah. Like, the most expensive ice is a road turn, although the deck has changed all the time now. The new version. Okay. Um, it runs, yeah, it now runs a toll booth. It's, the toss up is between adding a toll booth or adding an archer. And I was like, oh, man. Hmm. Archer costs an agenda, and there's only two pointers in this deck. Yeah. I, I like the, I like the uh, inclusion of toll booth. I think that's a pretty good idea, actually. Yeah, it, yeah, it uses like, uh, it has one Heimdall 2.0 and one Ichi 2.0 in there, too. Right. So it's like if I ever get that boost of 10 credits. Oh. Heimdall 2.0 is new. So there's an over-advanced Vitruvius, which is pretty brutal for a noise against a noise deck. <laughs> I think that was, like, kind of the end for you. Like, double-advanced Vitruvius just means you can do really stupid stuff. Yeah. Like, it's really useful because I play my own so I can just pull them back indefinitely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, uh, on my end, I'm really trying to... I mean, there's nothing reveal on your side, so I'm thinking, okay, uh, what should I go for? I mean, I'm just hitting your hand, like, consistently. Now I've got reason to do that, but... Um, uh, yeah, there's four cards in hand. Four cards in hand. I mean, that's not a bad chance of hitting it. I, the way I think about next design is that you start with more agenda density, higher agenda density, just yeah. generally. So... Um, I mean, maybe I was playing it a little bit greedy here, but... I mean, building up the, the uh, virus counters on uh, uh, nerve agents is pretty good, like, yeah. because my thing virus counters are just, like, the least satisfying thing to ever do. <laughs> I guess the core player is like, oh, man. Although it would be really cool to make that play of, like, biotic labor... White virus counters install or like do something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be good. I mean, you can also white virus counters, and you have protection on your archives. We yeah. even without a Jackson, which is great. Um, I I kind of want to play with Cyberdex trials, like hmm. just for that off chance of like blowing out the virus player because it's like Cyberdex trials wipes virus counters, and then you can install two things. It's actually yeah. really good with that deck when you get extra installs anyway. Yeah. Getting very far ahead. All right, so finally making a run. I've had enough, I think. Of... <laughs> I, I was in this weird mindset of um, 
I've been playing a lot of Nasir, and so uh, running a remote and hitting something small is the worst thing in the world for for Nasir. <laughs> um, so yeah. after after that, I, I think it's somehow got ingrained in my mind that I should stop doing that and just concentrate on centrals, which is how I usually play Nasir now. Is like get centrals rezzed, and then you have free access once there everything's rezzed later on. So um, I think that's partially why I was so kind of passive this game. I think that might have been uh, kind of my downfall here, but we'll see. All right, so that's a bronze, right? Yeah. yeah that's bronze, <laughs> yeah. So not getting oh, in there. Oh, nice. Yep. Yeah. There's Parasite <laughs> not being used. <laughs> I feel that might have been a mistake. Maybe I should have just gone Parasite at that. I'm trying to remember what I installed in that remote. I think it was like a jack. No, it was a... Uh, I'm pretty sure it was um, an Adonis campaign. Mm. I love Adonis campaign. So this deck plays three Adonis campaign, and does it play an uh, Eve campaign as well? No. Um, I, I was debating about Eve campaign. Man, Eve campaign is so bad in the short term. Mm -hmm. Like, it nets you 14... Or no, that's nine credits over seven turns. Which isn't bad, but you gotta protect it. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just really, really time intensive. Like, like I, it's, it's not like, like I'm, I'm short on ice or servers. Right. Like, but here's I make a mistake. I realize that I cannot play to Sahasra or Shahrazad. So, Shahrazad, yeah. Because um, they are unique. Yeah, that is the problem with playing with cards that, like, never see play. You don't really know what they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, my game plan here is now to find uh, cash. And I haven't found it yet, which is kind of frustrating. It's probably the most frustrating thing with this noise deck. Like, when you have cash, you are so rich. But if you draw your, de your uh, deja vus early and no cash, there's very little that uh, you can do to get like back in that game like unless you're just simply you know I can't I can't recycle parasites that's not a very good idea uh, but here I'm gonna parasite anyway giving you some money yeah, um, I, figured, uh, I gotta get rid of that so um, <laughs> I feel so good to get 10 <laughs> yeah also this isn't um, a particularly breaker heavy deck most anarchs aren't but um, yeah there's, there's, the, the there's the anonymous campaign yep um, this one only plays three Crypsis, uh, and wants to play more viruses, but I just am not drawing any. I'm drawing extra Grimoires, extra uh, Scheherazades, extra not cards I want. <laughs> so I think I was holding an extra um, Pawn Shop, uh, which is awful. You can't even play it. You can't pawn the Pawn Shop to play another Pawn Shop, so um, trying to get rid of that. but. This was a uh, slow game, um, slow grind. I, yeah, yeah, I just don't, don't like that noise deck, though. It's yeah. just not, it's just dissatisfying to play. Because it's, it's just kind of non-interactive. It's, it's kind of the, kind of, it just will arbitrarily win. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, I don't know, the mirror of decks, where it's just like, eh, it just don't really do anything. Yeah. I agree. I, mean, like, I like noise, I, but I... I do like noise. I, I think my, the problem with most noise decks is that they... They have seen the ability on noise, and they say, like, oh, okay, whenever you play a virus. So, like, now I just need to include as many viruses as possible. Right. But it's like, ah, like, if you just use the normal anarch viruses, like, so parasites, data suckers, three nerve agents, three mediums, and like, are there any other like commonly played viruses? I don't think so. And like maybe some imps. Yeah, imp. Yeah, imp's good. Yeah, so that's 15 viruses. Like you don't need more than that. Like you can even use less. Mm -hmm. Like if you get, I don't know, if you get, say, six mils out of his ability, like, that in my mind is worth, you know. Yeah, it, the, it's good. Yeah, yeah, like the two credits you get each turn from running HQ if possible, if you're Gabe or, like, 
I don't know. I think too many people are trying to just build around his ability. Yeah. Instead of just using it as a good ability. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Like, I don't know. People don't build Andromeda decks to harness nine cards in hand. They use it to harness, the, like, it just makes things more consistent. Right. It's like, people by default use Kate because it's like free money, but very few people build decks exclusively around Kate's. Everything's cheaper. So, um, on your side, you've got something advanced in that remote, which is yeah. pretty scary. I have no way to get in. I do have a parasite in the bin, which I am tempted no, to you use. You have a, you have the, you can flash it out. I can flash it out with a clone chip, which I believe right. I do here. I'll give you, so you're not resing the first one. Yeah, yeah so, so I, I don't, don't res, res the first piece of ice because I want to force you to, like, the moment I res a piece of ice, then you'll just check out. Right. You won't give me that 10. <laughs> I'd much rather have that 10. And than there's that. another one. <laughs> the worst possible thing for me right now. Um, yeah. I should have just been digging for Crypsis, but I do finally draw uh, cash, and that that will get me back in the game a bit. However, I don't think I can do anything about that remote. I think you have other plans. Yeah, I can't even remember now. I think you biotic this three-pointer out right here. <laughs> it's possible. I have so much, like... I am at Grindle levels of money. <laughs> yeah. And what's crazy is that it's just targeted marketing is what does it. Like, and it doesn't go away until you score. So like, if you wanted to... Oh, yeah, I remember. I had to go something. So this, is a, this is a Utopia fragment, I believe. Is that yeah. right? And, I, and I, I go, oh, Utopia... Wait, let me read this. What does this do? <laughs> like, I've never seen this played. I am looking forward to the other fragment. Like... Uh, I think they're cool. I like yeah. them. This is very powerful. Very powerful. Um, this is the least good uh, fragment in this deck. Like, either the Hades one or the you, um, the Eden one would be better in the deck. Isn't a Hades fragment, which one is that? That's, That's the, the one, one that, like, gives, gives you a one card checks in every turn. Oh, wow. That's yeah. pretty good. And, and like, like, noise is kind of the hardest matchup for this deck. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Random <laughs> mill is just really strong. Run your hand, see nothing again. There's a cash. So finally things are starting to happen. Gain a bunch of money from cash. So it's free with the Cyber Feeder, and I gain one from the Saharazad, and then four, uh, including the Grimoire uh, virus counter, from the cash. So I gain essentially five off of I that. feel like... Like, some of the plays you should start doing is installing cash and, like, taking one credit off of it so that there's three left on it. So people, like, that's a heavy incentive to, like, white virus counters. Yeah. I, but, like, uh, you wouldn't totally pay three to, like, time walk the core. Yeah, it can be pretty good. I don't... But it sets me back, too. I mean, having... Getting that much money to well, continue is... Once good. you have that cyber feeder, you can like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just like pawn it, it, get it back with deja vu. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah like you're not losing any money. You're just losing that immediate cash injection. Right. And like, if you need the money, then wipe it. Or if you have a second one in hand, you would wipe it. But like leaving it on the table seems like kind of an interesting play of like, uh, like maybe three is the right amount of money that I would wipe virus counters. Right. Right. Um. I can't wait until we get some of the inject. new yeah, <laughs> inject. Oh god, virus breeding ground and what's the other one? Um, there's one that consistently gets a virus counter every turn and it's oh yeah, uh, uh, incubator. incubator. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be pretty crazy. I, I think noise might be a little bit again more uh, non-interactive by then. <laughs> um, we'll see. We'll see. Like that, yeah, that interactiveness, though, I just... So, I, I think I'm commenting on here that uh, I am was looking for cash for so long and didn't find it, and I finally found it, and now I've got something to do. Um, yeah, but now you're three ice deep. 
on that remote and just like impossible to get through with the crypts unless you but I crazy do, click I, out. I think here uh, I do get through. I think maybe I do. I have one counter. I can put oh, two yeah, on it and I can I run. I think I can get through here. We'll see. I'm trying to remember if you actually scored this game. I think you did. I actually think this was the very close one. I think this was a very close game. I don't remember who won. Uh, I did. Are uh, you sure? Because uh, <laughs> I'm at five points, and there's all I needed was an agenda, because I think I had a biotech labor in hand. And the moment oh. you build out the agenda, I could pull it from hand. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's see here. So I'm I'm running. I've got three three uh, tokens now. So you can't keep me out. I mean, if it's something else, I'm thinking. Well, hopefully it's not a trap. Uh, I do know, like you do like to run some traps, and even uh, Grendel Refinery is at times. So I'm thinking. Oh, oh please don't no run a trap. <laughs> <laughs> it runs one, uh, uh, the program trash one. Oh, oh right. I this is one I wouldn't be able to score. Oh, mandatory upgrades. Damn it. Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. Camera didn't autofocus, but yeah, it's mandatory upgrades. It's a 2 6 and uh, gives the corp an extra click if it's scored. Forever. Yeah. Which is awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, and this is where I score out. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 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 There you go. <laughs> nice. Huh. I think we play another one here. Yeah. So I think we, we've got two with the same matchup. Um, and uh, sort of getting used to this deck a bit. Um, I think we have a closer game in this next one. So. Yeah. So tell me about the in, the uh, inspiration for this deck. What what were you trying to accomplish besides the like uh, obviously keeping the corp uh, in a sort of advanced state uh, where you know you're just a, a set a, a bit ahead of the the runner in terms of game state. Like what sort of set this one off for you? Uh, so the deck actually started as a foundry deck um, uh, because like I I know I've been playing a bunch of asset based decks so like. Been really like I made a kind of weirdo making news deck that used a bunch of assets, and um, I don't I don't know what was the exact inspiration. I think it was just like first the founder was like, okay, can I make a deck that runs twelve pieces of ice and like run just a crazy amount of economy? And I was like, ah, how do I install these assets without just losing my turn? Right. And then so then it came like shipments to Miramar. And then I realized, like, Blue Level Clarence and Shipments from Miramorph are really good. <laughs> um, so why not the Foundry? Uh, is it simply because that, that turn boost fits more with your game plan, or that, that first turn boost? I, I wanted to use the Foundry just because I could use run 12 ice and consistently get ice. So it's kind of like the inverse next deck. Because Neck relies, Neck relies on having more ice for that like explosive first turn, mm -hmm. whereas uh, the Foundry, you can like go really low ice, agen ice um, density and still consistently draw it, assuming you can res it. Right. Um, right. But I found that was not very good. Because there were a lot of times like to get more ice in your hand, you need them to run, and there were a lot of times when there would be like one ice in front of R and D, and then they would just run your hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or vice versa. Like, uh, this is this isn't working out. So another good start for you here. Um, this does yeah. this seem consistent? Like, have you consistently had about two ice? Uh, yeah, yeah. If I have one ice, I'll probably, probably take a mulligan just because I can. Like the deck should be able to consistently get two. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, so the duck started in the foundry, and then I kind of shifted over to, like, I want to go back to next. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know. I don't know where a lot of the deck inspirations come from. You just have that, like, oh, like, what I hate is, like, I like controlling the board state. <laughs> right, right. It's like, how can I do that more? Um, so I figured, you know, Willow the Wisp and Brother Terrace. And binary ice would do that. 
and they they really do. I think that was that's what kind of surprised me. Um, it, I think this, you know, I think it could be a very competitive deck, and uh, I I hope you do take it to one of the recent uh, local tournaments because I'd like to see how it does. Um, it, it's it's definitely the best next design deck I've seen. Um, a lot yeah, of them it's way, way better, better than, than like one, one of the, the earlier versions. versions that was like, like I made, made other, other next decks, decks that weren't very good. good. Yeah. <laughs> I think most people um, didn't really think about strategies with them. They're just like, put it all the next ice together in the next deck, and it's basically built. You know, It's like uh, Fantasy Flight was just thinking, well, let's just put all the next in the next design deck, and that's what we'll want. You know, That's not, not really how deck building goes, and I think you uh, may have stumbled upon one of the more interesting interactions um, with shipments. So, um, it, it's really crazy. Like, a turn one for you... Shipments from Miramore could be like one, two, three, like five cards, maybe even six cards installed on yeah, turn that's one. Crazy. Which is it's it's bonkers. I mean, what does the runner do? The runner doesn't do anything. Like they say, okay, you get that agenda. Maybe the next one, and possibly a third, <laughs> until they get set up. It's crazy. Yeah, like, like, you know, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the, the whole point. Because it's, it's like, like you, you want, want to. I want the whole point of the deck was like, like let's start at mid game. Mm -hmm. Like, because I am. I hate, I hate that, that early game, game where like runners are just like, oh, you have no ice on H2. All right, nerve agent. Lose all agendas in hand. Or no ice on R&D. Right. Medium. Mill, so, mill, mill. So this, this is a bit of a, this is a better uh, start for me, um, I think. Uh, yeah. And I mean, having wild side's great, but having a medium and a bunch of poor, well, not porous, but a bunch of easy to break ice is scary for you, I think. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, yeah, I think... Uh, there's a the shipment, so we'll yeah, see what, what happens shipments. here. All right. Um, but yeah, yeah like, like, the, the optimal, optimal like, like, you could have, have crazy openings where you do, like, three, like, three ice, ice from the next ability, ability and then you draw mandatory draw, draw then you could, like, next... Or you could shipment another three ice out. Or, oh, like, yeah, I did. Yeah, I just I did... Have you thought about the root in that kind of deck, or? Um, uh, I was using the root in that foundry deck. Uh, okay. I like the root, it, but it's so expensive. Yeah, six is a lot. Yeah. And it's it's another dirtily sort of thing, and you can just get a lot of money, right? I mean, that's yeah, kind of like I would rather have the immediate money out of um, uh, Adonis, Adonis campaign. campaign, and Adonis, Adonis campaign, campaign is a less, less of an investment. Mm -hmm. Like, like six, six is expensive. Like, like yeah, yeah, you res six, six and then you recoup three, three of it immediately. Yeah. But, but like, like, this deck, deck also doesn't, doesn't have that many assets. Okay, so at the moment, I'm still kept out and partaking of some delicious hors d'oeuvres. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like. like I know, I know, the, the deck, deck I, when, when I was, I was designing, designing the deck, deck, I wanted it to have, like, a high number of assets and upgrades. Mm -hmm. And, like, like just because of the things, things you can install. Like, so I tried to shy away from uh, uh, operations economy. Yeah, and uh, operation, or the beta test, is really good. Sorry, beta test with Jackson and Clay. Yeah, it's, it's pretty solid. Um... Uh, I mean, what do I do here? I mean, it's like, okay, it's going to cost me at least six to get through right now with uh, Crypsis, so that's, yeah, that's so crazy. Getting two plays. Yeah, so I'm getting a little bit of money here. Um, oh, then David shows up, and something happens. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that was right. David, David was surprisingly good against Rapper. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, little, little known interaction. interaction. Uh, I think I run for again, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think you can just pawn it off. <laughs> and do it again, I guess, or... Oh, that was my that was my third, yeah. 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 So, really good interaction, David, by itself. <laughs> <laughs> and, and here, uh, what's your name? Parasite, parasite again. Again, Parasite, yeah. <laughs> It's just just so central to this deck. I mean, what do I do? So this was oh, a yeah. much more interesting game because I think 
I'm pretty sure that whatever's behind those silvers is an upgrade. I, I mean, I know it's an upgrade, but I, I'm pretty sure it's a Will the Wisp. Um, I did know you were playing them, and um, I couldn't. I didn't think you had any other uh, tricks. So um, basically, I just had to, you know, go all in on a Crypsis to get through and lose my Crypsis, which is pretty bad. Um, <laughs> when you have three yeah. of them in the deck. Um, yeah. Pay four to, to like, like obliterate, obliterate like, like an anarch. It, it essentially reads destroy target. target. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah I, I changed, changed the new version so that it utilizes slightly different things. things. So, so like, like I run, I run an, an aggressive, aggressive secretary, secretary now. And, oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Alright, so I'm gonna some other upgrades that were better in HP. I think I pan I do pawn the the David here. Need the money. Oh man, I, I have that, that noise. noise deck. I hate that deck. Yeah, it's at least David isn't a virus, right? Because just imagine how annoying that would be. People, I think, would be scavenging Davids. Yeah, <laughs> Davids for days. Um, still, so uh, Jackson's out. So I mean, you're you're still protected. You've got draw yeah. power. You've got a server that's pretty, pretty <laughs> strong. Um, last no, click, okay. I run. See a bunch of cards. Trash the first one. That is a Will the Wisp. <laughs> Get that out of here. Two, three. Oh, yay. All right. Yeah, you score the beta test. test. I can't remember if I won this game or not. I don't know. I think it was really close. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. I, I, was, I know my record with this noise deck isn't great. Um, it, it does better at the local level. I think you uh, have a bit more practice against these sorts of things. So. You take it to the local tournaments, and they're like, you know, they're like, just don't know what to do with it. Um, so, it's still kind of new. Um, surprisingly, uh, nobody plays Shipment from Miramorph, so. Uh, <laughs> I've, never, uh, like, I've, I've never, never seen, seen that card that played, played ever. ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the next deck, deck is the only deck, deck I've seen ever use it. Use it. Ah, there it is again. Okay, things are getting a little bit scary for me because yeah, that's one. Like, I'm I'm saying like cost one, cost two, which is its only downfall. If it was free, it oh, would be would so way too good. good. Yes, it would be so good. I think you cover. Yep, archives. But, but just the ability to just oh, and then I remote. <laughs> yeah, just the ability <laughs> to like boom, boom flash out. out. That's three picks, yeah. and then and I can do, do something. something. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that was, was kind of crazy, because it was shipments, shipments from Miramor, and then credit credit. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty amazing, yeah. yeah. I was definitely impressed. I was impressed. Um, I know, I think part of the problem is, like, that card doesn't read good. Like, when you look at it, you're like, ah, oh, install three things, eh. Yeah. But in reality, that's, that's like, for the court, court that's pay one... Credit to, to gain, gain two extra clicks. clicks. Yeah, especially if you're doing a kind of horizontal strategy or just you know want to set up a server immediately, like a really fast server. Yeah. Um, so just rearranging things so that uh, the most important server is closest to HQ. I guess that's just a stylistic thing. I do that too. Yeah. yeah. Well, well it's, yeah, yeah, because, because like, like at, at a certain, certain point you would start building like, like if you can't, can't go, go horizontal, horizontal anymore, anymore with like, like you run out of room, you go vertical. Yeah. It does <laughs> like janky remotes. So, just running on HQ. I mean, RD, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, you own the ice wall. wall. You own the ice wall. It's keeping me out. It's, uh, it's pretty good. So, what do we do here? I don't remember what I do here. HQ? Like, I, I would, would be tempted, tempted in this deck to, like, like because, because I'm influencing in for Ice Palm, like, like, I would be tempted, tempted to use Galahads. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. I mean, it's expensive. That's the biggest yeah, thing. Yeah, it's two, though. It's, it's like, like two, two instead of one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Like, like, part of me in this, like, doesn't, doesn't even want next silver in this deck. deck. Like, I don't yeah. rather yeah. just have three static walls. Yeah. All like, static is good. It's it's a fine card. It's just the bare the bare minimum I think of a a three cost, right? So yeah, but, but I guess like part of the strength of the next 
ice, ice is, is that, that like, over the long term, term like, like it stays viable later. Right. Like, because even with two res, that's, that's an expensive server with, like, like, oh, yeah. Like, like it's, it's unbreakable, unbreakable with an overmind unless, unless you have five counters, counters four counters, counters on it. Right, which doesn't seem very, very good. <laughs> I wouldn't do that at all. Um, but the AI, AI breakers kind of hurt this deck. So I have, I've... Did you just put something in that server? No, you just uh, res the Donus. Yeah, and nice. there's still something in that server, and I don't know what it is, but you haven't done anything with it. Okay, now you've done something with it. Now I don't know what to do. <laughs> How do I get through there? <laughs> Big uh, question. Awkward. So I'm deciding whether I want to pawn something, I believe. Oh, no, I'm, uh, I've already gotten that. Pass that out. Tossing some stuff out. What's going on here? I can't, I can't tell whether that's, like, a good or a bad, bad play. Like, I will let the agenda sit in servers for a really long time. Um, well, I mean, it's for you. You want to keep your money high, right? So that you can yeah. protect everything else, which is good. It's really important. Um, so I don't... I, I think it's a, it's fine as long as you know I can't get in. <laughs> that's okay. But, but like, like, say you, you did draw your corroder, would, would you finally go, go in and check, check that? that? Like, like, had I not advanced that? that? Like, like when it's I, I don't play state, right? when it's just two I don't things. play. But if I did, then I would definitely go in. Um, so I, I just looks like I just pawned off David, drew two cards with Wildside, and now I'm c contemplating what to do here. Um, now I can't get into anywhere, which is bad. Okay, yeah. so we're gonna dirty laundry. So go to one. Nah, I don't remember if I trash this. I think I might here. Mm, my Certainly some thought into it. <laughs> yeah, my mentality usually is to trash the uh, the assets, uh, but again, I've been playing this year, and you just can't trash assets half the time, so I just leave things there now, which seems kind of greedy. Um, uh, Adonis, Adonis campaign, campaign? Yeah, yeah, I probably should have trashed it, but I think what I'm thinking of is that I have another Crypsis, so I can go Crypsis get in, right? So. I can I can at least get in. Um, where can I get in? HQ. I could probably get an HQ. Yeah. Um, if I had, I don't remember what I do here. This is, oh, yeah, I totally wrap around, around just, just like stop, stops stops me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's a Crypsis. or there, there's a Crypsis, So right, this game does, does go on. on. Like, oh, my, my deck, deck is, is looking, looking thin. thin. <laughs> <laughs> I just think you didn't draw your agendas fast enough here. It's one of the main things. Okay, I click. Run. Okay, then I run the... Ad no? No, you, you just, just... That was uh, your, your turn. turn. Oh, yeah. Then I just put tokens on it. I guess I was thinking maybe it's another five-pointer. And if it was, it would take you another turn unless you wasted your entire turn and all your cash. And if you wasted all of your cash... Then I would have free reign at HQ, archives, and possibly um, R&D if I could get rid of, uh, or if I could play another, yeah, if I had a clone chip or something like that. Because um, now I can get, okay, so it is a, an over-advanced um, Vitruvius. Yeah. So that is pretty good for you. Like, like yeah, having played, played with Vitruvius now, now, like, an actually over it, it, like, like how, this card is, is like... like Almost as, as good, good as Project Atlas. Atlas. Yeah, it, it's it's fantastic. Um, like, like, yeah, the, the agenda, agenda abilities I think, I think are just highly underrated. underrated. Like, like I, I, feel I feel like most people look, look at Petruvius and are just like, oh, it's, it's a two three. Because <laughs> like, I very rarely see people wearing it. it, and I, I think, think it's definitely, definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now things are happening. Yeah. Now, also, the cash really cool play with uh, shipments is, is you can do, uh, you can, you can yeah. like, like click, click for credit, credit install, or like, like you can do uh, ins ship it to Miramore, Miramore, install agenda, agenda and two pieces of ice, and then advance it once. There's data sucker. So oh, yeah. data, data sucker. sucker. Now things are happening for me. Um, yeah, yeah, things, things are, are looking, looking good. good. Things, things are improving. improving. <laughs> things are improving. Finally, draw the cards I want, which is nice. Um, 
I install. This is tentative for you. I mean, this is a scary moment because if that's an agenda and I run it, I'm going to get yeah. in. Because uh, I can just get in. So I think my play here is I figure that's not an agenda and you're bluffing. Um, because I could get in. Uh, so that's my reason, that's my rationale there. Uh, I don't know if it's a good one, but uh, I don't really have a choice at this point, do I? Hey. Hey. My, I like, my, my idea, idea was like, okay, you have a crypt system. system. Like, all right, I, I can, can just make that. That, that is tax, that, that is, is click taxing. <laughs> yeah, it is taxing. It's very taxing. Um, medium doing work, though, this game, I mean, okay, so now we've got some more stuff going on. Yeah. Um, so, I think this is where you drop Nerve Agent. Agent. Um, I'm not sure I played Nerve Agent this game. Um, do I? I don't remember. Mm. Well, we'll, we'll find, find out eventually. eventually. We'll find out, yes. <laughs> um, I am so, so tempted, tempted to get, get that second play map. map. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I, think, yeah, I, know, I know, like, like looking, looking at it, it's like, ah. Like, uh, well, well, next, next time, time you'll have your play mat, I can bring that one again, and maybe I'll bring, bring the Vitruvius one, so, so it's like a nice full play area covered. covered. That sounds awesome. It sounds two times the awesomeness that this is. Oh, I do play it. Okay. Okay. So yeah, those mills are just getting expensive. All right. So I take a gamble here and run HQ. Last click, which doesn't pay off. Oh wait, I can be, I can pay through here. Right? Yeah, you I'm, could. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if you do. No, you can't. No, I can't. I have that one credit. I can't get through. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, that's that's really awkward. Noise. Even though he has cash, he is still poor. And this is the point where I was yeah. like, okay, thank God, that is not an agenda. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I was really trying to bait that one out. I was. Like, come on, you know you, you want, want to just run it, you, you want to check. check. Yeah, yeah. It was a good play, I was tempted. Um, I just figured you couldn't win with it and in that turn, because it wasn't over-advanced, or it wasn't that one advanced, you couldn't biotic it. So my, okay, here's a, <laughs> here's a biotic. Yeah. And there's a beta test again, and I'm going, oh man, more ice on the board, that's just what I need. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know if, if I, I triggered, triggered it or not. I, I think you do. I think you get greedy. That seems really dicey. Yeah, I'm, yeah you I do trigger do. it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> There's no Jackson oh, on the board. I totally remember doing that because um, I had the uh, one advanced Project Vitruvius. So I was like, well, well worst case, I can, can yank an agenda, agenda back uh, from archives. archives. So I'm deciding what order I want to do this here in. Um, that is a tricky thing with this noise deck. Whether do you draw first? Usually, I like to draw first, but s usually I think that's the best choice. But if you really need the cash and want the extra click, pawning the wild side uh, is the right play. And I think when, uh, for instance, I've seen people play it where if the opponent sets up, if the corpse sets up a remote then you pawn the wild side and kind of play slower. Whereas you, you just get the money, you start using your clicks to do other things, um, and don't get kind of like tunnel vision with wild side, because... Yeah, it can, that's dangerous. It, yeah. It's a great card, but at the same time, you rely you can end up relying too heavily on it, I think. And um, that, That's right. Cash, cash data sucker. Cash data sucker, just, cash data oh, sucker. wow. So yeah. Lame. Yeah. It's, it's pretty lame, yeah. And I think there's a, you're like, ah, am I going to mill two more cards? And I'm like, maybe just one. So here's one. Oh, I, I, I think, think this was at the point, point where I had a biotic labor in hand, hand, but no, no agendas. agendas. No, it's like ready, ready to go. go. <laughs> oh, man. So what do I do here? I don't even remember. Oh, Parasite on the Roto Turret. That's brutal. Uh, That's kind of brutal. No, nah, Roto, Roto turret. turret. I mean, he's taxing right now. Yeah. Um, so, I guess that's why I did it. 
just to make sure you don't have agendas. So run HQ and snag a Vitruvius. Wow, that was lucky. Um, I thought yeah. that that was going to be just nothing. Um, so it's looking better for me, but I don't know what happens here. I mean, if you have a biotic, oh, you only have five credits though, so you can't biotic yeah. out the Vitruvius. Need another turn. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember, remember what, what I, I do. do in it. Oh, that's, that's right. right yeah. Yep. Okay. I install and then credit twice. What did I do? Yeah, yeah I can. Yeah. I installed them and credited twice, twice, so that, that got, got me seven. seven. Because I know, I know there's, there's another agenda, agenda in archives. archives. Mm -hmm. At least one, right? And, and I, I think I, what I, I did there is I was, I think that, that is the double willow of the wisp server. <laughs> <laughs> now, did I take the, I might have made a play error here, did I take the virus counter off of Crypsis? Or did I have several on it? Uh, uh, I, don't I don't remember. remember. I'm not mm. sure. That might have been a play mistake. I, I can't read the number from, from here. It's, it's one. one. It's one. Like, yeah. 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 It might have been a mistake. No, but, but the, the, like, like, I, I was, was just kind of faded out so you run on that server. server. So here I was worried about a, <laughs> a uh, wraparound, right? So I credit up to six, and then I've got one data sucker, and my math is I could get through a wraparound. Oh, okay. And that, I think, is game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, you got it. Oh, oh there's, there's too many, many agendas. agendas. There are three right, that's what it was. Uh, <laughs> so there's that, another Vitruvius, and that. Yeah, yeah there's, there's no, no way, way to stop was, it. Was there another one? There must have been another one. Uh, uh, what happened there? Or did you forget to use your... your... No, no, I could. Uh, uh, there, there was, was another agenda there. Oh, there. Uh, there was... Oh, there's a three. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, there's no way. There's a fragment in our as well. Oh, man. So that was actually pretty crazy. Uh, the the way that noise can exert pressure on archives is pretty insane. I mean, that's that goes without saying, I guess, but it's just pretty fun I, to see. Yeah, um, I just needed another, another Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> and I think I was blown away here that there were two Will of the Wisps in that server. That was that was a pretty good bluff. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't sure what was going on there. I love, I love the, the bluffing aspect, aspect of the game. game. Yeah, so uh, that is um, that is the first set of games, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, yeah, so any any final comments here before we call the first video a video? Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't got, got too much to say other than, than Shipments of Mirror Morph is really cool and, and should, should be played, played more often. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a believer. I, I thought it was... It got you ahead in a way that I wasn't prepared for, you know? Um, I feel like a lot of people get stuck in the mindset of, like, oh, I need to play X, Y, and Z because every deck plays these, or gets in those weird mindsets of just, to be competitive, I need to use this or have this strategy. Right. So, and here, I guess, we're just talking about possible changes to the deck. Uh, and and uh, I think we... We talked about where you went to blue level clearance, if I remember correctly. Is yeah, that right? I, was I was using blue level clearance in the foundry deck, deck, and then I switched, switched over to hedge funds. funds. And, and I actually missed, missed the blue levels. levels. I, think I think it's better than hedge fund in the deck. <laughs> and uh, so tell, tell me why, uh, explain why uh, it, it fits better with your uh, build, particularly. Uh, just, just the ability, ability with shipments is the, the key, key factor, factor, just because. because so. Not, Not only do you blow, blow out a bunch of ice on that, that, that pre-turn, but, but you could do click one, blue level, then click, click three shipments, and then clear out your hand. hand. So, so you're not discarding. So you're, you're like kind of maximizing the amount you're drawing. Because like a lot of problems with blue level is like you do it, and then you have to pitch like two or three cards. Mm -hmm. Because at six cards, you use it, you go to... Uh, eight, eight cards, cards in hand, hand and, and then you can, can only play, play one. one. So then you can discard two. two. So, so shipments, shipments gets around that letting you launch stuff out of your hand. That's good. That's actually a really cool interaction. Um, awesome, man. Well, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, this is... We don't really have a name for this uh, podcast, video cast yet. Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure that <laughs> out. This is a work in progress, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, yeah, well, we uh, have a bunch more videos for you, um, and uh, what we tend to do is just you know bring some kind of zany brews and test them against some uh, top tier decks, and uh, or play just top tier decks sometimes. Um, and oh, is that a strategy? Yeah. I, I don't know. That's <laughs> what, what we've been doing. Uh, maybe maybe well, yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, for instance, this is uh, the noise versus the uh, the pretty crazy next deck, but I think we have some interesting. Nasir decks versus uh, oh, yeah. NEH and uh, some other stuff coming up. So, um, yeah, well, we'll just uh, go from there. But thanks for watching, everybody. Nice. And see you next time. Have, Have a good, good one. one.